Hello everybody and welcome to The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. The secret tidbits that can help you as an Aquarist gathered from probably too much research on my part. If you like flashy videos with amazing graphics and great editing, probably not the channel for you. If you want good research that's been years and years in the making, probably the channel for you. So welcome and today we're going to be talking about collecting driftwood or fallen wood, dead wood, uh, sun bleached wood, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be collecting wood for the aquarium and talking about which woods are safe and which woods can actually harm or kill the fish in your aquarium, your uh, cycle in your aquarium, and you know which ones are great habitats and have beneficial properties for your aquarium. So wood is an amazing thing. There are over 60,000 trees in the world and there are shrubs and bushes that also have hardwoods that we can use for uh, putting in our aquarium. So out of all those there are some problematic ones and some of them happen to be some of the more common trees unfortunately. So I'm gonna give you guys a list of 10 things to keep an eye out for or to think about while gathering and preparing wood for your aquarium. Now, wood at the store is extremely expensive and you can go gather it for free and save a bundle of money. Now, if you don't trust me, you shouldn't, you should go double check, but if you don't just trust my word for it, I have some advice for you that, that immediately will remedy that and that is test it. Put it in a five gallon bucket or 10 gallon or trash barrel if you have a giant piece of wood for a big aquarium and let it soak for say a week. And if that soaking for a week, test the water before and after. And if, if anything's off, don't put it in your aquarium. If it slightly lowers the pH a little bit, then it might still be okay. Tannins are a natural part of wood and a lot of people put them in their aquarium for that very reason, to lower the pH and to bring the uh, medicinal properties and beneficial properties that they have. They help fish uh, with their slime coat, which is part of their immune system. A lot of fish need to eat lignin and cellulose, which is in wood, as part of their nutritional uh, daily intakes, like like uh, plecos and ancestress. And, you know, other fish just need it to feel at home, to feel safe, to spawn, and to live around, like a lot of catfish. So. Let's get into that now. There are 10 tips I have for you about collecting and a few little alliterations that I think will help you guys along the way. So let's take a look at some of my tanks and we'll discuss all this at the same time as per usual. Let's jump in. Hey everybody, we are inside now that's much warmer. We have a bunch of wood here in this aquarium. This is kind of my main community tank and we're going to start here with just this nice backdrop. Now we've got about five different species of tree that are involved in the wood in this tank and we've got a whole lot of plecos in here uh, from the uh, lemon ancestress and uh, all the way up to the uh, leopard frog plecos that are hanging out if you can see them back in there on the wood. So obviously lots of you know that wood has lots of beneficial uses. I don't need to tell you that. That's for a different video. And in the interest of time, I'm going to start out with number one of ten things, which is I'm just going to tell you what the toxic or poisonous trees are. Now that doesn't mean that they're always poisonous or toxic. Doesn't mean that uh, they can't be rendered safe by time soaking or other methods. But these are some of the real problematic ones. Some of which will kill your fish immediately if you were to put them straight into your aquarium. So right off the bat, hemlock, cedars, cherry, walnut trees, yew trees, cashews, sassafras, poplar, uh, various citrus trees with orange trees coming in on top. They also have very low uh, pH once they soak. The, they're very high in tannins. Uh, and so just beware of all the citrus trees. And on a side note, don't put any pits from any fruits that you haven't verified are safe in your tanks. A lot of them actually contain arsenic or cyanide or uh, deadly compounds because they're designed to not be eaten. Or if they are designed to be eaten, they're designed to be eaten by birds or other animals 
and then give them an upset stomach and regurgitate it so that they can grow as a tree or plant somewhere else. So just beware of nuts and stone fruit in general um, being used. Now, the wood of stone fruit is a different subject. I'm listing all the problematic ones right now. All right, so then we have Douglas fir, bitter almonds, rosewood, ironwood, teak, fresh oak trees. Uh, that is like oak that has newly dropped pitch or sap coming from it. Uh, if it's cured or long fallen, then it should be fine. Old growth oak is also fine. Wormwood, Brazil nut wood, which is also called Brazil wood, uh, bows, chestnuts of all sorts, uh, sumac, grape wood, olive wood, oleander, and then we have, of course, juniper. A lot of these are the aromatic woods uh, in the world. They're very strong smelling. If you can smell the wood and it has kind of an oily scent, or you know they make perfumes like from cedar oil or whatnot, uh, then you could probably guess that that has some property. And usually the property is an antifungal, antibacterial, but oftentimes it's an irritant to fish. And so you need to make sure it's completely gone from the wood before it's in your aquarium. And sometimes that can mean three to five years soaking in water. Now the last few, uh, these apply more to the Pacific Islands and as well as Australia. But we have the uh, mulga, the Australian cypress, the aroco, the mahogany, ebony, and the milky mangrove uh, are also woods you want to stay clear of. So there's the list if you wanted a straightforward list. Now I'm going to impl implore you to go check on your own and learn more about whatever it is you want to harvest. But it's hard to tell what wood is, is which species when it's been on the beach or on a river bank or lake bank for you know two three years soaked and then drying and then sun bleached in the sun if it is in the sun and you know washed up and it's very white and pale and pretty light to the touch when you pick it up it's probably a good chance that that wood is safe honestly it's probably been completely leached of its oils and probably its tannins. So it's probably not going to be helpful in a way of making a, a biotope tank or tannin. So moving right along on our list, we've got number two, which are the three F's, which is, you don't want any of these F's, fossil fuels, ferts, and fungicides, and I also in include pesticides. So basically, don't go gathering at a rock quarry or on the side of the road where you know that oil and petrol and uh, gasoline or diesel could be dripping, uh, or a site that was used for mining, you know, crystals or quartz or copper or whatever, you know, some sort of pit mine or something. Just stay away from those sites. They're generally contaminated. And also, you know, if you're on private property, you don't want something that maybe was in the back of a truck and there's like a can of gasoline next to it, you know, for the chainsaw or whatnot. I mean, some old abandoned stuff in a wood workshop you want to be careful just because it could be treated with something. So basically, you're staying away from things that could have contaminated that wood. Now, there's all different woods around the world that you can use, and a lot of them come from bushes and shrubs. So I encourage you to look and see which ones have hard woods, which ones have like sturdy roots, because most of these really cool shapes and designs like this one here, or the uh, spider wood that's down here that wraps all around back in there, it's actually uh, the root of the tree. And to get it off, you're gonna wanna use number three, which is bring a saw. Bring a saw or a hatchet, it just makes life easier. Let's go look at a few more pieces of wood and we'll continue down this list and keep cruising right along. All right, here we've got a tank that I keep with a pH of around 6.0. And what's cool about that, if you haven't heard the word, is that ammonia cannot stay in water that has 6.0 or lower pH. And that's because it evaporates out because it becomes ammonium. And what's also cool about that is the way to get it there is usually by leaves and tannins. Here we've got acorn caps. And I wouldn't put acorn nuts in the tr in your tank. Like I said, I wouldn't put most nuts unless you've investigated it and it's safe from what you read. Uh, but I know that the acorn caps and alder cones and um, 
pods from various trees are all very safe. Also, cactus is another thing that's not quite a tree or wood per se, but uh, choya wood is great for shrimp and for your little catfish, your Corydora and your goby and uh, all sorts of other little shrimp and things like that. They love it. So cruising right down the list, if you're going out harvesting, the other thing, number four, is mold and decay. You want to make sure that the wood is not really rotten and covered in mold or algae and slime. It's just going to be a pain, and you're either going to have to pressure wash it off, and and it's just, yeah, you're, you're going to want to not deal with that. So the other thing that you want to look out for uh, with the mold and decay is, is the wood still green? You want to make sure that that living... Uh, jacket that surrounds the tree it, so trees in the center the wood is dead it's the heartwood and around that there's a thin jacket maybe a few inches thick usually that surrounds the core which is the part we usually see as quote unquote wood or lumber with the rings around it and those rings are made out of the jackets each year which get bigger and bigger and the circumference surrounding the tree gets bigger and they're in between the bark and that heartwood and so you want to make sure that that heartwood is completely uh, as dry as you can get it unless it's been underwater then you want to make sure that it's nice and soaked but if you're picking it up in the forest or on the banks of some river or something you want to make sure that it's not still green you know that it would be a good wood to toss in a fire essentially and also I'd say take the lichen the ferns anything that's on it off and really a lot of that shows that the, it's rotted to the point that it can grow those things and unless it's moss or ferns that are epiphytes you'll want to just double check that it's not growing out of a soft spot in the wood because you'll need to cut away that soft spot which comes to my number five which is to debug debark and uh, you want to get rid of those soft spots like I said so number six is that the, you want to use hard woods. Basically, if you can stick a knife into the wood about a quarter of an inch or, or enough that the knife stands up on end, if you can kind of just jab it and it'll stay standing up in there, that is probably plenty sturdy wood for your aquarium. Now, uh, ideally, you want to use really hard woods. And there's some things like Mopani or like this spider wood or iron wood that can be dried or soaked in water for a long time and then laid out in the sun and cured by the sun, which we call sun bleaching. And it can actually make it much harder. Other woods get much softer. So just kind of be aware of that and, and, and test it out when you go pick up the wood that's lying around. You want to make sure that it's not full of holes or little curly cues where you can see that worms and ticks and other little buggers have been in there. Nor do you want to see that, say, like a woodpecker has been pecking away at it and there's a bunch of holes or, or badger or something has dug it out. That's probably an indication that it's too soft and that it's full of bugs. Their noses are pretty darn good. So number seven are the three S's and this really is the essential thing that you need to know which can make even those plants, those trees that I listed at the beginning, it can make some of those safe to put in your aquarium. And that is sun, salt, or soak. And basically, if you have enough time on that wood being cut down and not alive on the tree, either in the sun, out in the desert, treated by hot heat where it's evaporating off all the waters that will break down all those harm possibly harmful enzymes and things like that and you'll be able to uh, then soak it and see where it's at with the tannins and things but they can also be broken down by that sunlight uh, which is full of UVA and B light which will break apart those bonds as will just time uh, and the natural process that bacteria and fungi have. Alright, so if you want a tree where your catfish or your plecos and things are feeding, you're going to want one where you're probably ripping the bark off. You're going to want one that is not completely white and sun bleached. You're going to want something like this black forest wood that I have here where when you put it in your aquarium it's very common for it to have a clear slimy coat that develops within one to one day to a week after putting it in there and that's actually lignin and cellulose coming off of it and it's perfectly safe it happens to if, if you're soaking it to see if it's safe 
It's totally safe. Your shrimp and your snails will love it. It's great stuff. It's just full of protein and fiber, basically. Uh, as will beneficial bacteria. Now, again, when we're talking about putting these woods in, any wood can crash your tank if it has enough tannins in it to drop the pH. If you have an 8.0 guppy tank or something and you put a bunch of Mopani driftwood, which is totally safe per se in tanks, if you put, say, five pounds of it in this 20-gallon tank here, you would drop the pH probably to 6.5 from 8.2 overnight or within a few days and you would likely kill all your fish in the tank from shock in the process so time is key and that's why with those three s's at number seven the sun salt soak time is important and it time is also going to be important not just for how long since it fell but how long has it been in your tank? And also, you know, you need to decide too, do you want to see little bits of the wood falling apart? And do you care if it turns into mulm and basically uh, shrimp fodder or snail fodder where just like leaves, it's gonna create a lot of earthy mulm that over time builds up in layers. Uh, let's see a good example. Like in this tank here, you can see the layers. You can actually see where the iron's oxidized and there, there's all sorts of little branches in here and things like that, but they're starting to break down because they're so old. But if you have fish that don't need to be eating on it nutritionally, like the ancestors and stuff, and you have more snails and shrimp like this tank, and little fish and you're using it for structure or looks, then maybe it's not that, not that big of a deal that it is falling apart. Maybe you want it to be a little spongy after you have been assured that it's safe, uh, it's okay that it gets a little spongy in your tank over time because things like moss will grow on it. This is moss and it's also the Maramo moss ball algae and it's growing all over this manzanita wood in this goby and rainbow, uh, rainbow fish slash pseudomagill tank I have here. This is a lotus pod also. And by the way, I got all my uh, botanicals from Aquatic Arts. There's a link in the description. You can get 15% off, but I don't want to harp on that. Let's get on down to number eight, which is boil or bleach. And by bleach, I mean sun bleach. And this is what you're doing, not what, you, not what it was doing when you found it. So you want to make sure that you either boil the wood and get those extra heavy duty tannins, bugs, and you know, bacteria and things out of there just to be safe. It's probably fine. And some people actually like adding wood with those live cultures of bacteria and things on them. But I don't want to steer you wrong in this video. Do that at your own discretion. Um, now bleach, I mean sun bleach. And that is to say if you live somewhere hot, California or Arizona or Florida, you can probably, especially if the humidity is lower, you can probably leave your wood out in the sun for a few months and that's enough to clean it. You won't need to soak it for weeks or months like a lot of other people do. Uh, just break the bark off. You can use a, a sander or, a, you know, like a um, sandblaster or a, also a pressurized uh, water uh, washing uh, process whatever whatever you prefer I mean it doesn't really matter just don't use like a walnut shells or something like that like that you'd use for fine polishing because a lot of those leaves tra leave trace chemicals and tannins <laughs> that were on the bad list all right so number nine is gonna be test 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 so you're gonna put the wood in a bucket like I said in the very beginning put it in a bucket in one of those big old totes or in a five gallon bucket or a 30 gallon trash can let it soak, or even your bathtub. Keep track of how much water to wood ratio there is, and then after a week, test it. Test the pH, the nitrites, the nitrates. Make sure it's not literally rotting. If it's rotting, it will actually be causing nitrates and nitrites to come off, and you'll be able to catch that in a soaking tub because you don't have the beneficial bacteria breaking it down. So you'll be warned and you can judge, hey, was that too much? Was that, I mean, for me, the general rule is if it's doing that at all, I'm not going to put it in my tank. However, some people will say, well, I've got a 120 gallon tank. It was, you know, five pounds of wood only takes up three or four gallons of space volume wise. And uh, my biological filtration is plenty enough to handle that. But when you get that pH really low, like it can crash, the other thing that happens is your good bacteria can die 
because it doesn't have the ammonia, the nitrites and nitrates in the same proportions that it once did. The ammonia has turned to ammonium, evaporated off, and all of a sudden it starves. And so it doesn't have anything to eat after this giant you know, feast that it's been living on in your aquarium, and all of a sudden it can die off and spike and drop and then build back up when the wood starts to break down and it can be bad. So that's why you wanna make sure you got a nice solid piece of wood uh, or you know what you're doing with your cycle. Make sure your tank's nice and cycled before you put the, the wood in uh, with fish. Now if you're cycling a tank, it's a great idea to put some wood in and let it cycle with the tank. Just check it and when the cycle's ready, just like for a normal tank, that's gonna be ready with the wood too. So there's not really a limit to how big you can go. I've got this big old breeding tank with angelfish and cichlid in it. It's not real clean right now, but you can see that I've got a giant old branch of manzanita. And this one, I actually left the bark on. I don't recommend that. You don't know what bugs could be in there and stuff. But this was actually picked off the side of a mountain very high up in the high desert. And so if you're hiking up in alpine territory, it may have some bugs or beetles, but it's probably not going to have too much in it because it goes through freezing temperatures at night and, you know, 110 degrees in the day. This is from the Sierra Nevadas. But I'll let you guys be the judge of what you want to do with that. Now, the last tank we're going to look at while we're talking, we're coming in on the home stretch, our last number, and that is number 10, which is bring a saw or a hatchet. And that's really just for your own ease. You know, a lot of times wood will break just like this. And another thing that's going on here is this is wood that was in a forest fire. That's another thing to be aware of. If you have wood that burned in a hot forest fire, that's the same exact thing as active charcoal or activated carbon. And it will act the same as when you buy filter bags of that because it's basically a porous matrix like Swiss cheese that's trapping all sorts of things in it. So it can lower your TDS and other things, especially if you have a lot of flow in the tank. However, it can also just add carbon and wasteful, uh, you know, elements that were in the wood and it couldn't just decompose and cause a mess in your tank. So really stay away from burned wood also. It, it's too much of a wild card for what it could do. Uh, and the last thing I was going to say is when you soak your wood and you're testing out to see how it's going to do, uh, you want to also look for what comes off of it, residue floating at the top. Obviously, if there's something that's rainbow shimmering at the top, that could be gasoline or something. It could be bad. Could also just be protein, but soak it long enough that that's gone. And then if you want the tannins in it, go ahead and add it to your tank after soaking it and just making sure that you're aware of its effects on pH and the nitrites and nitrates. And then if you don't want it to cloud up your tank with you know a tea colored black water look, just like leaves can, what you wanna do is, like I said on number seven, is boil it or sun bleach it. Uh, until that stops or soak it, but that can take months and months. So any of those work. I hope this was a helpful list for you guys, and I hope it cleared up some of the mystery. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, uh, it does help the algorithm to, to let me know you liked it with the thumbs up. I appreciate it, especially if you made it to the end. And only 14% of my viewers apparently have their alerts on. So uh, if you want to know more about these secrets in your aquarium and the history of Aquaria, be sure to put that little bell on to get your alerts when I have new content. Have a great night and thanks for tuning in, everybody. Take care. This is Alex with The Secret History, living in your aquarium, wood edition.